Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Dental Up Podcast, brought to you by Keating Dental Arts, a full-service, award-winning dental laboratory. Each week, you'll learn tips and techniques from real-world dentists, bringing you in-depth interviews, motivating stories, current events, and sports. Here is your special host, the Senior Technical Advisor for Keating Dental Arts, Brandon Fetters. Hey everybody, Brandon here. Welcome to another episode of the Dental Up Podcast. Our guest this week graduated from the University of Maryland Baltimore College of Dental Surgery. She was awarded the master's status with the Academy of General Dentistry. She is a visiting faculty member at the Spear Education, a speaker for the ADA, and has been published in numerous dental publications nationwide. Currently practicing from Lafayette, Colorado, please welcome Dr. Don Waking, DDS, MAGD. How's it going, Dr. Waking? Hey, I'm great. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to meet with us here on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me again. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, because what was it back in, uh, what was it, I think May 2018, you were on the show with us. So appreciate you returning. And uh, just, yeah, yeah. So we can, uh, you know, kind of uh, recap on everything, you know, because I'm sure there might be a couple uh, repeat questions, but uh, just for our listeners that may not be familiar. What was it that drew you toward dentistry, and why did you want to become a dentist? Well, I um, initially, I really wanted to own a bar, and so I went to school uh, as a business major because um, I just liked the energy of the whole like bar restaurant scene, and yeah. of course, after working a couple summers in a bar, I decided that maybe that wasn't uh, really what I wanted in terms of like hours <laughs> and uh, lifestyle. Um, but you know, in a lot of ways, I think dentistry fits that same goals for me. Uh, my mom had mentioned dentistry when I was a kid, cause I always was like pretty mechanically oriented and I like mm-hmm. to do stuff with my hands. But, um, in, in my world, like my office is sort of run with that same energy, like a bar, like I kind of want everyone to feel like they're in that, remember that TV show cheers? Oh Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where everybody knows your name. <laughs> and, uh, so when people come into our office, we're like, "Hey, Tom, how was your weekend?" Oh, that's awesome. And um, so we're, you know, we're part of the community, and in a lot of ways, it's that same energy, which is fun. Yeah, no doubt that uh, certainly would help with the uh, customer retention. I would imagine, does it not? Right. Yeah, we've got some big fans. That's awesome. And now, um, when you were changing your career path, where did you end up attending school? Uh, I went to undergrad at um, the University of Central Florida in Orlando, mm-hmm. and then when I uh, dental school in Maryland. Most excellent. So, and yeah. um, throughout the years of practicing, did you end up having a procedure that you found as your favorite to do? Oh my gosh, I love anterior composites, and if you would have told me that in the beginning that this would be like my thing, I would have told you you were crazy. But um, <laughs> for me, it's so artistic. And I found a way to, you know, in the right occlusion, it just works so well and it's super conservative. And I love to be able to offer that to patients where, you know, most people won't. Yeah. And um, I saw that you had published, was it uh, the Denton sandwich? Is that what it was? I I believe I saw in quotes. (laughs) Is that, is that how you say it? Like a sandwich, like making sandwiches? (laughs) I can't believe they're still asking me to write for them uh, (laughs) since I came out with the article called the Denton sandwich. Um, (laughs) But uh, yeah, that was my first article for Spear Education. Mm -hmm. And it was just about kind of simplifying that procedure. So, you know, you can turn an anterior composite into like a three or four hour process if you're really layering it and, um, and making it super artistic. And the truth is like not a lot of those details you can see in person, like from a social distance. So, um, that article was just about simplifying a little bit so you can make it work better, you know, financially in your office and make it easier for more dentists to do it. Yeah. I imagine uh, quite a bit easier on the patient's pocketbook too. Oh, totally. Yeah. That's great. Do you, uh, do you actually now outside, obviously you're doing all that in-house. Do you outsource any, any procedures? Um, I have decided that I hate endo too much to spend any time on that. So yeah, I send out all endo and, some surgery and uh, assholes. I don't do assholes anymore. (laughs) (laughs) 
good, good choice. We outsource those. <laughs> now, when it when it comes to your practice, how would you describe the the layout of your practice? And um, do you do you actually have like a certain area in your in your in your office that you're shooting your photos? Um, I uh, I've just got a real small little house, so oh. I work usually out of just one operatory. We've got three total. Um, and my operatory is big enough that we have a little corner that I set up a little photo studio in. Mm-hmm. Um, but more often than not, I kind of, um, just use the wall and like a speed light, uh, to do the portrait photography. So, um, actually that's one of my upcoming articles for Spear is kind of simplifying that whole portrait process so you don't need all of the studio lights and the soft boxes and all the complicated stuff gotcha now how did you get into photography because I, I saw you did have some publications with that as well yeah I um you know I started going to a lot of CE and in that process I noticed that all of the good dentists were taking photos mm-hmm. and um you know it's just I put it off for a long time because, you know, buying all of the equipment is a little bit expensive and then learning how to use it and stuff seemed overwhelming, but, uh, God, I wish I had done it so much sooner. I think it's probably the best money you could buy and it helps, you know, as you guys know, with lab communication to send a photo versus just to say, make it a two, um, helped with my website a lot to have, you know, nice photos of the work that I've done and, um, with patient presentations, holy cow, if you could, you know, blow somebody's teeth up the size of a head and really show them what the problem is, then they can't really argue with you when you tell them that they need certain treatment. Yeah. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, just like you mentioned about from the lab point of view, that's so true. I mean, getting those nice digital photos, it's, oh, it's so extraordinarily helpful. Um, yeah. Now, now you mentioned about the uh, the equipment. Is there any equipment that you would suggest that Dennis purchase for them to begin taking their digital photos? Yeah, you can you can get into it pretty cheap. Um, I think the biggest key is to get a camera with a preset option so that you can kind of set your settings and then not worry about it. So you're mm-hmm. not always having to redo the aperture and shutter speed. Um, so I have a Nikon D7000 and that has two presets. So one is set to, uh, you know, teeth photos, one is set to portrait photos. And, you know, now this staff kind of took over and does all of that. So we don't have to worry about changing the settings. Um, and then we've also got a twin flash on the camera. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get real artsy with the twin flashes, um, you know, more so than just a ring flash. And then the, the light is a little bit nicer than if you did just a ring flash hmm. and then if you if you really want to do more portrait stuff you can get a speed light so i mean all in you could probably get a really nice setup under two grand and i would say it's like the best money you could spend i use my camera more than i use the digital sensor that i bought you know for the office gotcha now are, are you doing all the photography yourself or have you trained some of your office staff to take the photos as well both. Uh, I started doing it myself because mm-hmm. I think you can't teach your staff to do it until you like really know what you're doing. <laughs> so um, I started doing it myself first. And now the team takes them for all of our new patients. And then if we have like, um, we do some photo shoots when we're done with the big case. And usually I take that over because it's just, I think it's fun. Excellent. Uh, you had mentioned about the, the photos helping the website, your website. Um, what what else have you done for your marketing strategy as far as made the I'm sorry as far as um, social media as well as <laughs> mailers anything of that sort what what do you do to help your your practice in that regard? Um, the website's been really big. Uh, we've got a decent number of Google reviews, and so that brings a lot of traffic to the website. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, being a member of our community has helped so much. So. Um, people are into our, you know, office energy dynamic that we've got going on and they tell their friends about it and that's helped a lot. Um, and we've got this referral program that's also helped where, you know, I feel like it's uncomfortable for everybody to ask for referrals. 
And so um, we do something where if uh, if you refer a friend, then we'll donate to a local charity on your behalf. Oh, and cool. it's made it easier for us to ask for the referral, but then um, they get a nice letter after that afterwards that's like, hey, thanks to your referral, we've donated this money to this local charity. And that's been really great. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, I, yeah. I know that you've... Uh, you, oh, sorry. Go ahead and keep going. No, I'm sorry. I was going to say, we, we tried those mailers and boy, that was a huge fail. <laughs> <laughs> Just spending all that postage and not getting much return. Oh my God. I think we got one patient out of like a $10,000 campaign. <laughs> oh, wow. That's uh, definitely, definitely one to notate through for those new dentists out there. <laughs> yeah. Did not work for me. Yeah. Gotcha. Now I know that you, you do some speaking for, do you still speak for, for the spear? Um, I do mentoring for Spear, so they have mm-hmm. a, a number of hands-on courses, and so uh, I'll go w- and help just with the hands-on stuff, so um, I w- they call it more like a mentor or visiting faculty, and um, and then I'm a, a success speaker for the ADA, which means that um, they've got this program in the dental schools where you kind of go and talk about life after dental school and um, just to get the students excited about finally starting their career. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's great. Have you, have you attended any dental conventions so far this year? Uh, I went to the, um, the AACD is my favorite meeting of the year. They've got all these really great hands-on courses Mm -hmm. and um, Spear just had their faculty club summit in September. And that's always amazing. Um, The Rocky Mountain Dental Convention is coming up. Uh, in January, and I'm excited to go with my team, and won't we'll, you know make a weekend out of it. That's awesome. Um, do you have anything other than that? The Rocky Mountain coming up here soon? Are, 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 uh, well, are you, then sorry. the cycle starts over again. So then we'll be back to AACD and uh, the faculty club for Spear. Awesome, awesome. Um, now, kind of switching gears, going back toward the uh, the digital factor of the photography and all that. What are your thoughts on the impression scanners and CAD CAM technologies? I think it's so cool. Um, I haven't gone there yet. Every year I start to look into it, and um, I just haven't done it yet. I feel like um, my ceramist has been doing this for 20, 30 years, and they're experts, and I don't I don't want to learn how to be an expert in making (laughs) crowns and onlays when uh, it's working right now. Gotcha. (laughs) If it's not broken, don't fix it. (laughs) Yeah. And maybe that's a narrow minded view of it, but um, I I don't know. I keep looking into it and it's like, God, you could take a lot of impressions for the cost of a scanner. And in my little tiny office, I just, um, we don't, I don't know that I do enough numbers to justify it you know yeah it's a viable option i hear you now when when you're not actually practicing what do you what do you tend to do when you're not working oh i've been a little adventurer this year i've been um to italy and hiking the grand canyon and uh have a stew pie went to costa rica been camping wow Uh, it's been really awesome that's great making me jealous (laughs) yeah, <laughs> it's um you know what it, it's all back to like the whole photography thing in a weird way like you know you learn photography and the dentistry and then uh i was like god i have this nice camera i should really use learn how to use it and um, so a lot of the adventuring like it comes down to like i'm always trying to get a nice photo and it it makes me get out and about a little bit more because i'm like okay and i have to hike this mountain to get a cool shot awesome so so you're doing some lands landscape photography as well yeah i mean not a lot but um i went to italy for a landscape photography workshop that was amazing um it's been really fun that's cool do you display any of your work around the office no (laughs) which is sad (laughs) i need to um, because that's a whole nother level to this thing is learning the um, how to Photoshop them and make them look a little bit nicer. And then mm. um, printing them is just another level of, I mean, I guess I'm a little bit like hesitant to print them because you wonder what if a professional photographer comes in and 
starts judging it. But I guess that's what we all deal with is like posting things online and everything. It's a little bit of uh, a humility, I guess, that comes with it. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime you're uh, you're putting your art out for the rest of the world to judge, you kind of have that little risk kind of going with it, doesn't it? Don't you? Totally. Yeah. Now, um, along with the photography, there's, you know, we, we do have quite a few young dentists that listen to the podcast. Um, what would you be willing to share that you've done differently with your practice? Um, well, in terms of photography, I would say, like, I wish I had started sooner. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I put it off for a couple of years because it was sort of expensive. And I was like, oh, I don't know if it would actually be worth spending that money on it. And I'd say you can't afford not to do the photography like you'll you know patients will accept treatment way quicker and um just in terms of like showing off your work on your website i kind of think like who cares if you're doing great dentistry if you can't show it off yeah and and before you're doing great dentistry because there is this window of like oh that looks like crap i don't want to take a picture of that but uh, if you photograph even the crappy stuff then it helps you learn you know you can look at it and be like oh i see there where i should have you know done something a little bit different yeah excellent yeah those before and afters really are a great uh great tool to be using oh totally you know aside from the photography i just wish that i uh, i went a little gung-ho on ce for a little while because man i sucked when i got out of school and i think most people do Mm -hmm. It, it was helpful to be like dude, I suck at this. How am I going to get better? And um, I think, so I took a ton of CE and I think you could be the best dentist ever and run your office into the ground, which I can't say I came close to it, but it's so different where, you know, as a dentist, you wear so many hats, you're, you're expected to like run this business and be an amazing dentist. And um, I just wish I had had a little bit more business, uh, training before I did my whole practice thing. Yeah, certainly. And, um, now when, when you're doing your before and after photos, do you share those on, on dental town? You know, I don't, I, um, I haven't been on dental town in a little while, but I used to search dental town a lot. I do. I'd put them more on like, uh, Instagram, Facebook, mm-hmm. and then just my website. Yeah. You're going to reach more, uh, more potential customers that way. Anyhow. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you have any, um, now, as we move forward with the with the dental industry, do you have any concerns about the future? Uh, no, I think I feel like there's always going to be a place for really high quality care and um, kind of where dentistry is going. I think it's even more important to just like set yourself apart, make sure you're providing really high level care. Uh, I'm not in network with a lot of insurance, so um, I think it depends on the setting for sure. If you if you decide you're going to be scared or not, and like uh, there there are a lot of people who just are like really concerned about the future of dentistry, and they're really negative about it. And I think that um, I've just decided I don't want to spend time with them anymore because the flip side is you get to hang out with the people who are super excited about dentistry and excited about setting their offices apart and incorporating new technology. And that feels better to me. Yeah. That's a better vibe to be around. To be no doom doubt. And gloom. Yes. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. All right. So um, now speaking of, uh, of the spear education, do you, do you ever visit the spear education headquarters in Arizona? Oh yeah. I'm there. I used to be like a kind of a nutcase and I was going like, eight times a year for uh-huh. a little while. Um, I'm really dialing it down and I'm going like three to four times a year now, which uh, like, I'm not going to be back there until I think February this year. And I kind of don't know what to do with myself because I love it there so much. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I go a lot. Excellent. And are, are there any courses or seminars that you would recommend for other dentists? My favorite is spatially generated treatment planning Mm. and that's one that I go and mentor quite a bit because it's just um it's so valuable I think like I said I really sucked when I got out of school and I you know you don't realize what you don't know and that course spatially generated treatment planning is where I sort of realized like holy cow there's so much that I don't know 
and it felt so good to just like learn and get better and then go back and continue the process. So uh, for me, that's like, I tell everybody, you have to start there and then you'll figure out what you're into after that. Excellent. And are, are you, do you, I, I know you had mentioned about how once we hit 2020, you know, the whole year kind of starts back over. Are you planning on doing any more speaking engagements in the, ne- in the year to come? Um, no, I'll still be doing stuff with the, um, with the ADA. If, if they'll continue to have me, um, I'm working hard on finishing my accreditation cases for the AACD. I've got mm-hmm. one more to go. So hopefully this year is the year for that. And then um, I hope to just take some more trips I'm yeah. looking at Costa Rica, maybe Machu Picchu. I oh, awesome. really want to wrap the Grand Canyon this year. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah, that, that's actually what I was about to ask is considering all the uh, adventuring that you did this year. So you still have more more to go for next year, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's too fun. Um, yeah, I love it. Excellent. Well, Dr. Waking, I really appreciate you taking your time to be on the show with us. It's been great having you on again. I uh, just want to thank you so very much. Yeah, thank you so much for having me again. Really appreciate it. You got it. Well, take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Okay, you too. Bye. Thanks for joining us on the Dental Up Podcast Show this week. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or search the Dental Up Podcast on iTunes for our weekly feed. Don't forget to visit KeatingDentalArts.com slash promo for exclusive offers. Keating Dental Arts is a full-service dental laboratory, and we're nationwide. We'd love for you to send us a case so we can show you the Keating difference. If you dig what you heard, please leave a review on iTunes, and we'll be back next week.